You did it. You made it to the end of the AP World Modern collection of videos that I threw together for you. So today we're going to wrap it up talking about 9.7 and 9.8, resistance to globalization, and a new institution that is developed within a globalized world. Uh, starting off with um, responses to the rising cultural and economic globalization uh, that will take many forms around the world. Um, first, we see a major anti-globalization movement grow in the late 20th century. Protests against the action of the World Trade Organization will take place around the world since that group's beginning in 1995. For example, in 1999, the Battle of Seattle saw tens of thousands of protesters in Seattle, Washington, um, that included labor groups and environmentalist groups uh, working, uh, protesting and, and actually shutting down a meeting of the World Trade Organization. Uh, there's a lot of different factors that lead into people being uh, anti-WTO or anti-globalization. Uh, some of them could include poor working conditions, um, for, uh, including aspects of child labor, sweatshops, uh, unsafe conditions as, as jobs have been outsourced and, and taken to the, to the developing world, uh, environmental damage, uh, clear cutting of forests and, and industrial pollution. Um, again, another reason that some countries or some companies have moved their practices to other countries is because of, of lessened environmental regulations. And then some concerns over national sovereignty. Uh, conservative groups have feared that globalization threatens national identity. More recently, the Brexit movement uh, removed the United Kingdom from the European Union in 2016. This is an example of that conservative push against globalization. Uh, what have these anti-globalization movements advocated? First, a, a push for human rights. Uh, remember that, that basic freedoms uh, that all people around the world should enjoy were outlined in the UN Universal Declaration on Human Rights from 1948. But of course, um, in many aspects of the world and the world's economy, we are lacking those human rights. Um, aspects of fair trade uh, rather than free trade, uh, that the people providing goods and services should be receiving reasonable payments for what they are providing. Sustainable development. This is the idea that business growth should focus on sustainability, um, not using too many resources, not being polluting, so that future generations can continue to meet their resource needs. And then debt relief, to ease pressure on interest rates and debts that the International Monetary Fund um, has with some nations of the developing world. And then we're going to wrap it up with uh, the creation of the United Nations, an international organization formed with the stated goal of maintaining world peace and facilitating international cooperation. The United Nations is born at the end of World War II, meant to replace the failed League of Nations. Today, the UN, based in New York City, has 193 member nation states. Um, there are different assemblies within the United Nations. First, the General Assembly, where all member states are represented, and it takes two-thirds of a majority to pass any resolutions. The Security Council ends up being really the most important body of the United Nations because that's what decides when actual military um, uh, uh, military will be used against aggressive states or possibly economic sanctions, economic punishments against aggressive states. Um, there are five permanent members on the Security Council. These are the victors of World War II, the United States, the UK, uh, France, China, and Russia, along with 10 rotating members. And those five permanent members have veto power. So they can reject anything all the other countries want to go along with. This really makes it difficult for the United Nations to truly be an effective peacekeeping force um, through much of the 20th century uh, with the United States and the Soviet Union often opposing each other's right resolutions. There are other assemblies within the UN, the, the Secretariat, for example, which is the administrator of the United Nations, uh, often from a smaller neutral country to balance the influence of the Security Council. Currently, the UN Secretary General is Antonio Gutierrez from Portugal. 
The International Court of Justice settles international disputes, uh, um, and there, but there's no enforcement power uh, between them. They will make decisions, um, but they would need the wider body of the United Nations and the Security Council to actually bring enforcement of their resolutions or of their decisions. In 1948, the United Nations issued the UN Declaration of Human Rights, freedom from slavery, torture, degrading punishments, equality before the law, a right to a nationality, equal pay for equal work, rights to adequate food, shelter, clothing, healthcare, and education for all. And, and these are the goals of the United Nations that they've been pushing for for, for 70 years. But of course, 70 years later, uh, in many parts of the world, including in many cases our own, we are lacking in some of these. The United Nations also takes part in a lot of peacekeeping missions, um, and this has been done throughout the history of this organization. In 1956, UN peacekeepers were deployed in the Middle East during tensions between Israel and Egypt. The United Nations also became involved in peacekeeping missions in the 1990s with the end of the Cold War. It's much easier because then you could actually get some agreements between Russia and the United States. Over two dozen peacekeeping missions around the world have taken place since the 1990s, though some of these have failed. The, uh, the failure to prevent the Rwandan genocide as the UN peacekeeping force uh, arrived that was really too small and too late to the action. Uh, there are other areas of focus for the United Nations. For example, the UNHCR, the High Commission uh, for Refugees, focuses on providing aid to refugees around the world. Uh, the World Food Program of the United Nations provides food aid to people in need. UNESCO, the United Nations Education, Science, and Cultural Organization, focuses on aspects of literacy and free education uh, for people around the world. And then Human Rights Watch monitors human rights abuses wherever they might be taking place. A number of international organizations um, and, and financial, what we call non-governmental organizations, work closely with the United Nations. The World Bank provides loans to nations for infrastructure projects. But critics charge that the World Bank uh, pays too little attention to environmental and cultural concerns. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, was created to promote stable currency exchange rates and providing short-term loans uh, and economic advice to developing nations. Though critics will argue there that the IMF contributes to, to uh, old-time economic imperialism as nations are often saddled with debt uh, to repay the loans that they have received. So what do we take from this final video? As the world becomes more globalized, um, anti-globalization movements have developed. The United Nations attempts to maintain world peace and cooperation through the 20th century, uh, though it finds challenges amidst the realities of the Cold War. And the United Nations and other NGOs, non-governmental organizations, make attempts to solve international problems, but they bring critics along with them um, uh, because not everybody agrees with the solution to the problems. And that is it. We are done with AP World Modern. Good luck on your test.